Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Thousand One Games. I'm your host, Gaming Jay, and today we're checking out iRobot, which is actually kind of an interesting game. It came out in 1983, but it is 3D. I didn't even know they could do this in 83. I didn't know the technology existed. Um, I don't do this super often these days, but I decided to read about this game. Um, no jumping, it's the law. Uh, from the book, it has a re relatively short entry, but the reason is because... This is a game I've never heard of, didn't know they could do this in 83, and I feel like this is a bit of an obscure game, maybe I'm wrong on that, but I just wanted to see precisely what the book says, so... It says, today Polygon serves as the fundamental building blocks for all but the most simplistic games, whether they're running on high-end PCs or phones. By the end of the 80s, they were more exotic artifacts and only rarely seen. The appearance of Atari's iRobot in the arcades in 1983 was therefore something of an event. Originally titled Ice Castles, the game brightly uh, colored, filled with three-dimensional objects and terrains, uh, was a quantum leap in the wireframe spacecraft and landscape of traditional arcade games it presented a solid looking environment that felt like what they were supposed to visions of a far off universe um blah 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 game history is littered with technological pioneering games that fail to supply substance with their innovations but irobot delivers an engaging challenge with with its revolutionary alien playscapes your task as unhappy interface robot number 1984 is to change the color of the environment from red to blue by simply maneuvering over it. An idea lifted from Cuba, but realized here in a more variety and depth. Um, birds and other hazards will get in your way. Big Brother is open. Failure to do so results in instant laser administrative death. iRobot's distinctive styling is underlied by its inclusion uh, of an alternate play mode. Oh yes, I've seen this. I won't... I won't spoil it, but the book says, uh, yeah, it's kind of a weird concept. Anyway, fascinating game, fascinating game. These are the kinds of games that we, I was hoping to discover starting this long, long quest to try the thousand and one games. Anyway, let's slam in a quarter or two and press start. So here are the two game modes. Doodle City is literally a paint drawing program and you have three minutes to play it. Um, we will check it out, but I, I booted this up for just a minute or two before I started recording, just to see. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's what I, uh, I was noticing. So, kind of weird, but, uh, you know, hey, if you've got a 3D engine, why not make a weird paint program? Why not? So that, that, that's basically it. You just go around and we, um, have to... Oh, do not jump if the eye is red. Okay. Uh, what is this? Energy transporter. Oh, I can go to any level I want. Wait, what happens? I don't even understand. All right, so we're trying to change the world from blue to red. And you can, like, only jump... Ooh, do, do not jump if the eye is red. It got me again. Didn't even notice. Oh, the eye is looking at me. It's green. Oh my god, a bird got me. Shoot birds. Oh yeah, you can shoot. I have a button. I forgot. Game over. All right, well, we'll figure this out. It seems sort of like 3D Cubert. So that's kind of interesting. I'm just going to keep shooting. If we happen to kill some birds, we kill some birds. Oh, I think we killed a bird. Jump to the eye. Oh, but it's red. We got you, eyeball. Oh, we incinerated that eye. It exploded. Look at my robot's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Very interesting. Oh, that was, a, uh, I thought those were power-ups we were supposed to collect. Avoid solid objects. That is <laughs> good advice for life in general. Oh, it's a shooting stage now. Wow, this is so advanced. 1983, guys. This is pre-Mario 1. <laughs> like, Mario 1 couldn't even do- I mean, not that there would be a shooting stage in Mario 1. Although, I shouldn't say that. There is a shooting stage in Mario Land for the Game Boy. Um, but yeah, very interesting. Okay, the eye's gonna open, turn red, and then it goes away. Alright, when you see the eye starting to come out, that's when you kinda have to, like, chill for a sec. Now you're good to go. Interesting. Whoa! 
I, I jumped right into that bird. Look at that, now that I've created land, you can just jump right back to where you were. It's relatively interesting. Whee! Oh god. Two. Whoa. Yeah, eat it, eyeball! Cool. Well, I'm getting a feel for the gameplay, and it's actually... Honestly, like, I, I've never been a, the biggest fan of Qbert. I get people who like it, why they like it, but I think I'm just not very good at Qbert. But I feel like this game, I'm way better than I am at Qbert. So this is one that I think I, I I might have liked back in the day. I might not have hated this game. What what killed me? What is that thing? Just a big circle in the middle. Hint: star buttons change views. Oh, they do. So hold on, we can... Oh yeah, you can go into like... I don't like these views. Oh no, I'm stuck in it. Oh, and I got killed! <laughs> I can't see the eye in this view. I want the overhead view. Um... Oh, maybe it's player two start button switches it back and I don't have that. Oh, this is a terrible view. Just kill me. Do not jump if the eye is red. Just wait till it is red. And then jump intentionally to die. Yeah, get me, eyeball. Can't see anything, so I might as well kill me. Um, alright, let's... Not press start this time, because I want to keep the overhead view. And there is this, uh... Transporter here, so let's just... Try a different level. This is a level we died on last time. Whoa. Okay, so there's some sort of big thing in the middle that wants to eat and kill you. Oops, do not jump if the eye is red. I didn't even see the... Wow, you really have to keep an eye on that eye. Didn't even notice it was there. Also, what a weird, uh, weird rule. Wait, what killed me? Oh, God. Run. Okay, this thing... Oh, my God. That thing in the middle is really hard to avoid. Okay, we're gonna skip this level, because that thing is difficult. We have not gotten a high score yet, which... Usually, in these 80s games, at some point, we get a high score. That's... I wouldn't say concerning, but... Surprising? This is an interesting looking level. I think I changed the view, accidentally. I can't see if there's an eye. Oh, there it is. Red, all right, go, go. I think we can stay, I think we can go at as slow a pace as we want. We're not obligated to go at some arbitrary speed. No ships to jump to. Okay, once you've built some paths, you can just sort of do little hops like that. Oh, are we running out of time? Oh, I think we are. Oh, no. Ah, I, I panicked, man. We're running out of time. I think we got it this time, though. Oh, no, the bird. Oh, I killed it. Nice. Nice. Wait for that eye. You know, if the eye wasn't there, I feel like the birds are uh, challenge enough. Do we really need an all-seeing eye that will murder you if you if it sees you when you jump? Oh my god, this is the boss from Star Fox! Every spike must be shot. Shoot head to make it turn and stop spiking. Oh, right, here we go, we get one more shot. Bye, spikes! This is totally the boss from Star Fox. You fight a giant face in space. Space face. Get out of here. This is so cool. Man, people must have, like, not understood reality when they saw this game in the arcades. It must have been like, what is happening? Like, 3D stuff, you didn't even see it in movies. It was, like, uh, so atypical. Like, to see it in a game like this? People must have gone nuts. 
Oh my god. Oh god, no! Oh! Oh god! Okay, it's actually hard to walk down these bridges. Where's that eyeball? Oh god. Go this way. Go this way. Oh, run! Run, little robot. We're, we're gonna run out of time on this one. Ugh. Oh, come on. We're so close. Yes! No! He turned red just as I was coming to kill him. Hey, we got the highest of high scores. Well, I'm gonna enter my initials for that one. That, w that was tense. Uh, J A. Tired of video games? Burned out on mass fashion? Forget the game, relax in Doodle City. Okay, let's try Doodle City. Give it a shot. Alright, so here we are. Drawing in Doodle City. Oh, look at this shape. This is interesting. So the only button you can press just changes the shape that you're drawing, and all you do is leave a trail of shapes behind you. <laughs> this cost a quarter! Oh, button two is to spin. Uh, pick pictures. Okay, both starts is special. I guess I really should assign player two. I'm using a, an emulator, obviously. I don't have player two start assigned. Although, do we really care? Do we really care? Oh, look at that thing. Look at this. Look, look at all. Oh, there's a hand in there. Oh, there's faces. Could, like spell out letters and stuff. Let's just look at all the shapes. What else we got? Look at all these things. These are all the graphics. They literally just programmed something that would take every shape in the game and just show it to you. It's sort of like, you know how games sometimes have sound tests? Like, you can go into the original Golden Axe on Sega Genesis. In the option menu, there's like a sound test, and you can press a button to hear every sound in the game. Um, this is the graphical equivalent, the polygonal equivalent of a sound test. Oh, I, it, once you go past something, it takes forever to get back to it. I kind of wanted to see the face. Okay, hold on. Let's cycle back around <laughs> one more time here. Okay, we're getting there. Oh, look at that! There's a hand. Okay. There's a face! There he is. Oh, he gets big! Oh, that's cool. Oh, weird. So, it's, it's not just a scaled sprite, it's actually a polygon that's being drawn. That's cool. See, the, the thing is, I want to leave leave that picture and then put something else beside it. But my only options are to do this. Uh, or clear it. So, anyway. That's... That's Doodle City. Wait, why am I going backwards now? In the items. How did that happen? I don't, I don't understand the controls in this. 19 seconds left, and then we can get back to... Oh, that's cool. It's actually a 3D star field. I thought it was just uh, a 2D sprite, but yeah, that's actually far more impressive. Before, I was like, yeah, ran colored dots. How boring. But when they move back and forth, you can see. Insert coins for more time. No thanks. Um... Please insert more coins. Alright. Let's go with the actual game here. We'll give this one more... One more shot. How far can we warp? Let's see. Let's find a far level. That's as far as we can go. Alright. I'll do it. Uh, whoops. Oh god. That eye was almost red, man. I think the trick is to unlock the later, the far points as fast as you can. Ooh. And then deal with these closer points as you need. Oh god. 
Okay, let's go, 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 go. Oh, shoot. Get it. Yes. Okay, we got that one. Okay. Oh, there's only one more point that we need. Mmm, there's a ball that's gonna come kill us. Oh god, no! I didn't jump? Where was I jumping? Why did my- why did my view change? I swear, I've not been pressing start or anything. My view just decided to change as we played that level. Damn, we almost- we almost soloed that level. Or like, one-shotted it or whatever. Either way, it was good. It was good for us. Yo, oh, god! Oh, I think I got an extra life. I like these parts, actually. They, at, at first, it sort of struck me as like a cheap clone of like... Gradius or Space Invaders or something. But it's actually... better than it looks. Oh, god. <laughs> okay, this is our last shot. Something is throwing footballs at us. Oh, god, and the football got us. And we are done. Anyway, I mean, we could keep going in theory, but uh, I think we've seen what this game has to offer. It's an interesting, it's an interesting game. Sort of a 3D-ified Qbert. Has some shooting parts. I think all the parts actually play pretty well. I'm rather impressed. They're, it's the kind of arcade game you wouldn't have seen very many other games like it back in the day. I mean, it, again, it's sort of, it has Qbert and it has sort of like a flying shooting thing. But it's done in a way that you didn't, you wouldn't really see for like another generation or two of games. You know, fighting that face really felt like, oh my god, the no, the law, no jumping. Fighting that face really felt like fighting the end boss of Star Fox, you know. Um, I think the controls are a little difficult to get used to because there's some times where I didn't want to jump and I was jumping and it's, you know, virtue of using sort of a joystick. Um, it's, I find them a little less precise in D-pads, but even still, I just think the way the game's designed, you... It's, it opens itself up to accidental jumps. But if you get used to it, I see a pretty good game here. So, yeah, there you go. I don't know. What do you guys think? Is this game obscure? Had you actually not heard of it? Uh, or is it one of your favorites? Is, do you remember it being back in the arcades in the 80s? Did people like it? Let me know in the comments down below, guys. And as always, I hope this video brought you lots of nostalgia. If it did, don't forget to like the video and all that crap. And other than that, I'll catch you next time. <laughs> Until then, my friends, you take care of yourselves. We'll see you soon. Peace.